the CCPA gets lethal, Fujitsu remote work plans, a new EU banking system, and more on this week's Security Weekly. Hello, I'm Sasha, and welcome to the only place where you get the latest on what's happening across the world in security and technology. It's official and it has teeth. As of July 1st, the California state government is enforcing its CCPA, or in its lengthy version, the California Consumer Privacy Act. If companies fail to comply, the penalties will be severe with the price tag of $2,500 up to $7,500 per violation. Despite CCPA being signed into law two years ago, it has also been in effect since January 1st, the government gave companies and organizations a six-month grace period to review their procedures. Though that changes now, and the Attorney General can now go after those businesses that violate the law. The law affects any person or organization doing business in California with over $25 million in revenue, or any business collecting information on over 50,000 people or devices. The law is significant as it will likely make big tech and other Silicon Valley enterprises tread carefully as there's already a global push led by Europe's GDPR to ensure data protection and privacy. Japan's Fujitsu, one of the world's largest IT service providers, is making waves with a very unique announcement. Given the unprecedented times we're in and the challenges the global economy faces due to COVID-19, the Japanese company is adjusting to what it calls the new normal as it will reduce its office space by 50% over the next three years. Like many companies adapting to remote work, Fujitsu will now institute a work from home policy as the standard for the entire company. Follow similar moves by other tech giants like Google and Facebook and begs the question if most of us will ever return to the office that we used to know. Over 15 banks from across Germany, France, and three other Eurozone countries, including Santander, ING, and Deutsche Bank, have announced a truly European payment system to be up and running by 2022. For a long time, European Union policymakers and bankers have been seeking to establish a European rival to take on MasterCard and Visa, as well as Alipay and Google. The news has been supported by the ECB, and it has also advocated for an industry-driven solution to compete with U.S. rivals. The new European Payments Initiative is envisioned to become a new standard means of payment covering all types of transactions, including in-store, online, cash withdrawal, and peer-to-peer. The COVID-19 crisis has shown a need for a unified European digital payment system as the use of cash has tumbled during lockdown and consumers are using more contactless forms of payment. We always encourage more focus on cybersecurity, so it's good news that the Australian government has decided to invest over $1 billion into boosting its cybersecurity defenses. Though the reasons behind this are a bit sinister, as Australia in particular has been dealing with a wave of cyber attacks in recent months. Just a few weeks ago, the government stated that a sophisticated state-based actor had been attacking all levels of government, political bodies, and essential service providers, as well as operators of critical infrastructure. Though unconfirmed, it seems some experts have shifted the blame and pointed at China, though Beijing has vehemently denied the allegations. Australia's new cybersecurity investment will be used to hire an additional 500 security experts and beef up the nation's cyber intelligence agency. And that's a wrap for this week's episode. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Remember to keep extra careful out there with all your online and digital activities. Be safe, be healthy, and see you next time.